Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. So Ukraine for the first time strikes the military facilities in Chechnya, Russian Federation. You may see that smoke, it is coming from the Ahmad Special Forces training facility. And here's the photo of the building taken after a kaboom, so there was the internal fire. Well, the Chechen officials together with Kadyrov are saying that everything is fine, no one was hurt, but according to the other sources, there was the training of Chechen Spetsnaz by the time. You probably know it already, but this spring Kadyrov appointed his own son as the supervisor of the Special Forces School in Chechnya. He even obtained the medal as the youngest chief of the Spetsnaz School in Russia. Yeah, kind of the strange award, but Adam Kadyrov likes the medals. Yeah, obviously Ramzan Kadyrov didn't like the event, that's why I think he will request some of the air defense systems from the Russian army to secure at least Gudermes and Grozny. Yes, the strike happened in Gudermes, Chechnya, which is really far away from Ukraine. After the strike, Kadyrov was just explaining of what happened, then the Russian propaganda journalist asked him whether there will be the response from Ahmad. Yes, Kadyrov didn't speak about the possible revenge himself, he was forced to respond on journalists' question. So he tells that the revenge is imminent and now he ordered the Ahmad army not to take the Ukrainian prisoners, so he openly say worldwide to perform the war crimes. Well, in case of Ahmad, it doesn't really that matter, because he may rarely spot them on the front lines. You may say that there are some of the videos in internet showing how Ahmad soldiers are interviewing some of the Ukrainian prisoners of war, but those POVs were just given by the Russian regular army to Ahmad for the video filming purposes. So basically it doesn't matter for Ahmad whether they have this order not to take prisoners or not. They are not taking those anyways because they are not fighting at the edge of the front line, usually. There could be rare cases as it happened for example in the Kursk region of Russia where Ukraine actually imprisoned some of the Ahmad soldiers. And after all, if Kadyrov doesn't like of what is happening in Chechnya, I would suggest him to call Putin because it was his main decision to start the war in Ukraine. Without the decision, no rockets or drones would strike Chechnya. The first source where I found the news about the event is the ground news. It's Chechnya Special Forces Academy on fire after the suspected Ukrainian drone attack. 38 of the news sources report about that event. I use the ground news for my daily updates not just about the Ukrainian topic but about the news worldwide. It is an awesome powerful tool that gives the opportunity to see the news from different perspectives. I encourage you to subscribe for the ground news using my personal link, it's ground.news slash Dennis. Or we may just scan the QR code available on the screen. Well, here we have the information also coming from the Russian sources about the Chechen event. Well, Russians themselves confirm the possible war crimes coming from the Ahmad battalion. Kadyrov announces the death of the captured Ukrainian soldiers. It is crazy that the Russian propaganda is not even hiding it. So before clicking on the news, you see that the ownership of the media belongs to the government of Russia. And it also has the mixed factuality, so it's good to know before you're opening the article. Well, let's try to find the Ukrainian media. We have the Kyiv Independent. Well, they say that there could be the possibility that the Chechen Spetsnaz facility was struck by the drones launched from Dagestan or even Ingushetia. Why could it be so? Well, we all know about the big conflict around wild berries between Kadyrov and some of the businessmen from Dagestan. So actually it could be the part of the internal war among the Russian elite. So those Dagestani mafia business bosses might look for revenge after Kadyrov soldiers stormed their office in Moscow. Yeah, it seems like the conspiracy theory, but everything is possible nowadays in Russia. So as you see, the ground news platform gives the opportunity to receive the news from many of the sources, including the enemy sources, which I sometimes use for my updates, because we need to understand what is happening in the enemy side as well. The ground news is not the big media corporation, and they rely just on our subscriptions to maintain an awesome job of their ambitious team. I subscribe for the ground news myself and I encourage for you to do so. You may use my personal link ground.news Dennis and this time you'll obtain not 40 but 50% of Vantage plan. This is the best deal of the year, it is available for the limited period of time and valid for my viewers. If you're already a subscriber you can send the ground news as a gift for 50% off too. So make sure to use my personal link below or scan the QR code available on the screen. By supporting the ground news, you also support the job that I do daily on YouTube because the ground news is the long-term sponsor of my channel. I'm really proud of the sponsorship, so ground news, thank you so much 
for sponsoring this video. There were some other strikes of Ukraine and the Russian facilities, we're gonna speak about those a little later. Now let's go to the military map analysis. And definitely we have the confirmation that Ukraine started the counteroffensive in two raids. So before I already told you about it yesterday, there was the report from the AMK mapping and today North reports confirmed that same information. And also there is the confirmation from the Myco Census Reanalytic with more details. Russia continued to use some of the surveillance, artillery fire, aviation bombs, and unfortunately Ukraine lost a single vehicle during this counteroffensive. As for the bad news from the front lines, it seems like Russia fully occupied Slidova, or almost fully, there could be just one district which is still under Ukrainian control, but actually it's in a gray zone. So with the Russian attack from the south, they managed to cut this road from Vishneva. And by the way, they have already established the control over the settlement, as well as over the central part of the Solidova itself. Well, honestly, I expected a longer fight for Solidova, but the Russians managed to occupy it almost fully in a matter of few days. Why did it happen so fast? Well, some of our Ukrainian commanders are saying that there was the change of the command of some of the brigades. Also, there was the rotation of the Ukrainian soldiers. Ukrainian independent journalists are also saying about it that it was also the mistake done by the Ukrainian military command but on the other hand it seems like Russians know the exact time of the rotation of the Ukrainian brigades and they strike at the most vulnerable time for Ukraine then the new brigade arrives they need to spend some of the time to get used to the new battleground but at the same time Russia strikes and sometimes brigade arrives to the enemy positions straight forward so I hope that this situation will be avoided for example in Pokrovsk but by occupying Solidova Russians are opening the way to attack Pakrovsk from one more direction. You may see it on this military map, so they're moving from this side, also maybe from this side, and with taking Solitova, they may move also from the south, and you see that in this area there are just some of the small settlements left on the way to Pakrovsk, Plus, Ukraine will have to defend this entire territory before this direction was the most important one, but now we have one more direction actually with the road which helps Russia for assault and also for the future supplies deliveries if they manage to break to the Pokrovsk outskirts. So absolutely 100% we're gonna see the battle for Pokrovsk this year. And the weather here is actually the secondary factor because as you see there are lots of their roads which could be used by the Russian army for their attacks. I'm also waiting for the new update from Kurahevka. The situation in this region is not good for Ukraine. I expect that very soon Ukraine will be forced to retreat from this place. Well, we also have some of the good news, even in those events, Russia tried to attack Kurahove directly from this place. But their attack bogged down under Ukrainian FPV drone strikes and artillery. We have even the drone image of that attack attempt. You may see some of the vehicles in a convoy. Russians still attack using convoys, yes. And their vehicles were kaboomed mostly by the FPV drones, so we have the videos from the drones. Russia lost at least two of the T-72 tanks and four of the BMP. There was a little rainy recently in that region, so Russians halted their attacks using the light transport. Mostly they now strike with BMPs, and during the winter time, as usual, we're gonna see mostly vehicles with caterpillars or tracks. Tracks, how it's better to say. I'll obviously share this video on my Telegram channel. Here I cannot show you it fully because of the censorship. Russians also continue to suffer losses even in the Kherson direction. This video is filmed by Russians themselves, and they understand in what deep shit they went into. The governor of the Zaporizhia region is saying that Ukraine is preparing the significant defense lines in Zaporizhia. He said that the entire oblast is turning to castle. Well, we already heard that information about the Kharkiv oblast before, but finally Russians managed to break into the Kharkiv region from the north. And before Ukrainian officials, the governor of the Kharkiv oblast plus Zelensky visited the territories near the border with Russia, saying that everything is fine, everything is defended, but after all, those defense lines were not prepared. And just because of the heroism of the Ukrainian soldiers, Russians were stomped, for example, in Vovchansk. So yes, Ukrainian people and Ukrainian military have the questions towards the Ukrainian government about those defense lines. Hopefully this time in Zaporizhia region, those were built according to all of the rules and definitely those are robust. Because in most of the cases, Ukrainian infantry, the Ukrainian military in general, have to build their own trenches, but they're quite limited in engineering capabilities. The military 
Central Engineering Equipment is not there for everyone, so obviously the civilian engineers should be involved in building the trenches, as it was in the Second World War. Guys, this is my channel, and I also share my own opinion on what is happening in Ukraine. So Zelensky recently announced that the Ukrainian government will give 1,000 grivnes to everyone in Ukraine. So with the current rate, 1,000 grivnes is 20 with something dollars. And honestly, I don't understand that step. Well, actually, the most of the Ukrainians do not understand that step because it's clearly a populism. By the time that Ukraine cancels the help for internal refugees from the occupied regions, they give 1,000 grivnes to everyone, which will not solve actually anything. Even if you go to the grocery store, you usually spend more if you have the family. So Ukrainians may apply online on that support. So after all, I expect that one third of the Ukrainian population may get those funds. That's roughly 12 million people. And again, 1,000 grivnes is nothing nowadays in Ukraine. So why not to spend those funds for Ukrainian army? Because it is not the problem-solving solution for the order people. So I consider it's like the open populism, which is frustrating, honestly saying, and the Ukrainians came out even with memes. This is one of the memes, by the way. It reminds me of our old corrupt politicians by the time, for example, Yulia Tymoshenko, who was the prime minister of Ukraine, and she had the same program called Yulena Tisicha, so Yulia's Thousand. Well, by the time Thousand Greenness was more than $100. At least there was the sense, but now 20 with something bags? As I've told you, not even enough to buy groceries. Mm, I don't see the sense. Yeah, I've took the news from one of the Ukrainian Telegram channels, and definitely the comments are not great towards that initiative. Recently, there were many of the scandals connected to Ukrainian Prosecution Office. It was founded that many of the prosecutors somehow on the paper were disabled. They did it for bribes not to go to Ukrainian army. Millions of dollars were involved in those bribes, so the Parliament of Ukraine, because of that scandal, decided to dismiss the Ukrainian general prosecutor. His surname is Kostin, and the new prosecutor Prosecutor will be Ruslan Kravchenko. I need to dig more information about this guy. But honestly, the Ukrainian system in general should be changed. Wow, interesting report from the Financial Times. So, after all, there are some of the negotiations between Ukraine and Russia to halt the strikes on the energy facilities. Before there was the confirmation from the multiple of the sources that definitely those talks are ongoing between Russia and Ukraine under Qatar's mediation. But later on, Ukraine started the Kursk operation and Russia decided to halt those talks. Now Ukraine is seeking to restart negotiations once again. I think that the Ukrainian side understands that Russians do have capabilities to strike even the nuclear infrastructure of Ukraine, not the nuclear power plants themselves, but the substations which are used to transfer the energy from the nuclear power plants. But again, it may lead to the possible nuclear accidents, and according to Ukrainian Gura information, Russia is preparing for those strikes. You know, for the last months, Russia usually struck Ukrainian infrastructure with the help of the Shahid drones. The Ukrainian air defense mastered the technique to shut down most of the Russian Shahid drones, but it seems like, after all, Russia is preparing for the major strike on Ukraine using their strategic aviation. According to the satellite images, they concentrate their strategic aviation in Alenia airfield. They do this stuff before the strikes, usually, and Alenia is the main base now for the Russian bombers, together with Angels, by the way. But Ukraine may reach the Angels airfield with its drones, so that's why Russia moved their bombers to Alenia. So not just Tupolev 95 is presented there, there are lots of the Tupolev 222M3, which sometimes also used by Russia to strike the Ukrainian infrastructure. And I guess that they will try to strike the Ukrainian energy infrastructure, then it will be the cold period of the year. Joe Biden plays the role of the Captain Obvious. He says that Ukraine should strike back if North Korean troops cross into Ukraine. I would say more. Ukraine has the right to strike back even on the Russian territory, for example, in Kursk. No matter what forces and from what country Russia involves in their fight against Ukraine. It is so obvious that it's even strange that those articles do exist as well as those statements. So obviously Ukraine will defend itself against any kind of the army. All right, Ukraine strikes not just the Chechen Spetsnaz training facility, but also the Russian ammunition depot in Luhansk Oblast. Here you can see a huge kaboom. It is that huge because Russia stored lots of the ammunition. The secondary detonation also was filmed. I share those videos usually on Telegram, and here you can see the consequence. It is huge. Caputing those Russian ammunition warehouses actually helps to stop or slow down the Russian attacks. 
Right, we have one more evidence that Ukraine continued to use F-16s. So where it was filmed, it is the question. Probably over central or western Ukraine, Ukraine still hesitates to use F-16s entirely on the front lines. Because the F-16s could be within the range of the Russian air defense or the Russian fighter jets. So to operate F-16s more freely, Ukraine needs the greater number of those fighter jets. So hopefully next year it will be possible. I took this map from the Russian sources and here they agree that the idea for the Russian military command is to move towards Andreevka and Constantinople, two of the villages on the road from Kurahove. So definitely it's the goal and Russians already reached this line. It's quite far away from the previously gained front lines by the Russian army. So it creates a big threat for the Ukrainian group left in Kurahova region. Right, Russians report that they've stopped the Ukrainian sabotage group in the Bransk Oblast. Four of the people went there from the Ukrainian territory and Russians told that they found those Canadian flags. Yeah, Russians always claim that they fight against the NATO forces. Well, after all, some of the Ukrainian sources also reported that Russians stopped the Ukrainian sabotage group in Bransk. But whether those were Canadians, well, I'm trying to find that out. Because Russians are very good providing the fake information, so I wouldn't trust them on anything without the other confirmation. Ukrainian army is looking to mobilize 160,000 new soldiers in the coming months. And definitely we see the increment of, let's say, openly the forced mobilization to Ukrainian army. As I told you many times, the volunteers are already fighting in the army. There are several of the reasons of why Ukrainian men do not want to join the Ukrainian army in general. I'm gonna speak about that issue a little later. I don't want my words to be used now by the Russian propaganda probably to mock the Ukrainian army, but we need to speak about those issues. The problem here, as I told you, that it doesn't matter of how many forces Ukraine can mobilize, because Russia will mobilize more, as always, because they have more resources for that, basically more population. Also, by not building the robust trenches, the Ukrainian side use more resources, so more soldiers, more military equipment to seize all of the Russian attacks. So the number is not that important if the system is working with flows. Those are not just my words, guys, but the words of the majority of the Ukrainian military, of the soldiers and officers who fight on the front lines. They say that the Ukrainian army in general needs reforms as soon as possible. Yes, even during this war time, because without it, there is no place for victory. We have the new update released by the Deep State military map just right now. We see how Russia strikes from the Vuledar direction. So Vuledar was occupied recently and it was the forepost for the Ukrainian defense in this entire region. Now we see how Russia gains the territories. I've told you about this possible scenario a long time ago, so Vuledar played a key role to defend this region. Now it is gone and Russia moves forward with a new pace. You see, it was one week ago. One week ago, Russians were here and we see how they move. German intelligence confirmed that for the last week, Russians took more than 400 square kilometers of Ukrainian land, which is actually the record if we speak about the pace of the Russian attack since 2022. Well, at the same time, Russians also do have severe losses. The record number of the losses was also registered the last week, but it seems like the Russian army is okay by wasting their soldiers on the front lines. Well, after all, in any case, Putin may announce a new mobilization in Russia, actually everything is ready for it, so he may cover those losses and assault again and again. You know, we all speak about the possible peace agreements with Russia, and somehow our Western allies are pushing mostly Ukraine for those negotiations, but no one says of why Putin should stop his attacks if he is taking the ground. Yes, by wasting his army, but he doesn't care. He is goal-oriented, and I don't know actually what may force Putin to stop right now. Then the Russian army has a clear initiative on the front lines. Well, with those territorial gains, I would also put the Kursk operation under the big question. Because, for example, as Ukrainian General Marchenko says, Ukraine deploys the best of the best forces in Kursk and still tries to keep the ground. Well, maybe it's time to use those forces somewhere on the east, because Russia is breaking the Ukrainian front lines, but even those forces are not enough to stop the Russian offensive. Guys, I'm telling you the story as it is, we need to speak truth, and that's what we see on the front lines, so Russians are something also taken village by village on the south, 
and about the key village of Andrivka, that's their goal actually, well how far are they right now, almost 13 kilometers, less than 10 miles away, so really nothing. I think that the Russian army will be much faster from the south, because there are just few of the settlements, than advancing from this side, because there are many of the settlements, plus some of the war obstacles. So Russians are now trying to avoid the battle for Kurahava, which might cause them severe losses by advancing from those two sides, so Ukraine will be forced actually to leave this area under the risk of being encircled so i would say that the south of the donetsk oblast could be occupied by russia maybe even this year if they continue with the present really high pace well i think they also may advance westbound to this river in the future and you see there are just fields fields flat ground not good for defense without the robust main defense lines for this northern part it will be much harder for Russia, but again if they take Pokrovsk under control, they may create the same situation as we see over here. So Ukraine is looking for the possible solution and as the part of the secret plan of Ukrainian victory, President Zelensky asked the United States and in general the Western allies to provide Tamahav missiles to Ukraine, while well, those missiles have the range of more than 2000 kilometers. Definitely that tool is great, but I don't see the perspective for Ukraine to obtain those missiles in a close by perspective. Well, maybe one day it could be possible, but not in 2025. You may say, Dennis, it is completely impossible, but the same thing was said about the Attackham's missiles and F-16's fighter jets. As always guys, as you see we have some of the mixed news and I encourage you to subscribe for the ground news, it is the ultimate source to be updated on the worldwide news, including obviously a Ukrainian topic. The link as usual is in the video description below. And also please don't forget to press your huge like to this video by doing so you help me a lot and as usual I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.